Hello, Anna. Hi. Um, my name is Mitya. Uh, I'm a user experience designer, not an anthropologist. Uh, and um, I have some questions um, which will be read by Slovenian software developers, okay. uh, software designers, and so on. Um, okay, my first question. There are still many products and software designers, uh, product and software designers out there who ignore your user research. Um, they just don't go out in the field, they don't talk to users, um, and my experience is that many people, even designers, are basically afraid of talking to strangers. Um, what is your advice to overcome, overcome this fear? Is there an advice for that? Well, there, you're, I have to break it into a number of things. One thing okay. is the fear factor, okay. but the other is why don't they go out? And I believe that people don't go out because they believe that they are the expert and they have the answer. Okay. And while they are experts in uh, the uh, design tools and methods, um, we live in a world today where the end user, the users, are more empowered than ever before and actually are demanding to be involved in the design process. So if they continue to design in their little boxes by themselves, they're not going to meet the needs of end users and the people. And then what's going to happen is somebody else will design a better product or service and they'll be out of a job. Okay. So that's the one thing. I really believe this and it has to do with the expert belief or having humbleness enough to realize that we don't have all the answers ourselves and that the best way to get answers is working together. So it's a collaboration. Okay. The other piece of it is, is the fear factor. And I think uh, I question what are they afraid of. So my first question is, what is there to be afraid of? I don't know. I go out. <laughs> you, you go out. So um, if it's fear of meeting their own inadequacies or, or, or that they're wrong, then that's even more reason to go out because actually it's pretty exciting when you realize you are wrong because you find out what's right and then you get really excited. Um, but going out and asking people is... Um, it's an art. It's not just anyone can go and do this because, okay. and I believe that, because you really have to put yourself in their shoes. If you start asking questions from your perspective, then you, you, you will never get the right answers and the best answers. But if you can put yourself in the shoes of the other person and get them to talk and listen, it's really not about the asking, it's about actively listening to what people are saying because a lot of the findings that we get are in the surprises. Usually, if I would say this to, to designers, they would still say they have a brilliant gut feeling and they, 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 they have you know, nurtured this gut feeling for years. I um, understand that and the gut feeling is a hard thing to deal with because what is causing that gut feeling? So I understand that, mm -hmm. um, and they should allow that gut feeling to be there, but what we try to say to people is that you need to put your gut feeling in a parking lot. Yeah. You can go back and get it, mm -hmm. but put it in the parking lot, go explore. And you'll design your gut feeling yeah, to work and, better. <laughs> yeah, exactly, and then you can go back to your gut feeling and check mm -hmm. it out after mm -hmm. you bring back some other options. Awesome. Which industries are, in your opinion, um, the least user-centered? Which industries have biggest problems in, in, in your experience? I can't say because I think they all do right now. I think we're in a big crisis. For me, um, I work in Norway, which is a, a, a social democracy. Mm -hmm. So the entire public sector is in crisis because they've been building without the people, without the, the uh, everyday people on the street, the, the citizens. They've been building by themselves services for the people. And um, so my passion is to help them build with the people because in my belief that's the best way to create 
the most meaningful, relevant, useful, and desirable, and sustainable okay. services and effective services. So in, in my place, but banking is a complete disaster. And that's another place where it's the focus is on how much money can we make from our customers instead of how what value proposition do we have for people. And what people need today from banks isn't necessarily what banking traditionally has stood for. So how can we turn that around and help them become more than who they are? Did I answer that? Yes, perfectly. I, if I would be guessing, I would guess banking. Yeah. Because maybe today you mentioned that KPIs are, you know, relying too heavily on numbers is bad for business at the end yeah. of the day. So if you, you know, the financial industries are usually the ones that have been relying solely on, on, on KPIs and numbers for decades. Yeah. And they have maybe ruined the economy because of that. Because well, they of have this. ruined the economy from that. Um, I chose public sector because that's where my passion is. Okay. <laughs> but you're right, it is. Uh, the finance uh, sector is pretty intense. Okay. The public sector listening. to me is, is uh, in uh, desperation. And uh, the areas where I'm working with service design, it's so obvious and it's so easy to make change, really valuable change. Um, Big opportunities. Uh, huge. Yeah, huge. And I, I think Scandinavians and maybe I have I have been studied, studying extensively um, UK's case. Yeah. They have done some great work. In like, the health sector. Uh, in the health sector, yeah. And also in in their website, Go UK. Yeah. They have built you know digital services that yes. you know are directly um, connected with the government. Yes. And this product is, is something that, you know, we in the UX industry, we're just blessed with it because yes. it's something we can preach now, you know. If, All over if, the world. If the, if the bu bureaucrats in UK could do it, and anyone can, can do, do it. it, you know, any yeah. industry can do it. Because yeah. in UK they have bureaucracy, huge mm -hmm. bureaucracy. Yeah. And it's really interesting. Okay. Um, seems like design thinking, service design methods, uh, user experience are buzzwords in, in, in a way. Um, do you feel them as buzzwords? Do, do you think that they should consolidate around anthropology or what would be the best? I think they should consolidate around people. Around people? Uh, I realize that it's very hard to avoid saying the word user because people experience it doesn't sound as easy, it yeah. doesn't roll on yeah. the tongue yeah. as yeah. nicely. But for me it's really about the difference between the focus and starting point being people and the needs of people, whether they're articulated or not, okay. versus starting with technology first. And if you start people first, you always have the opportunity to find meaning. And from meaning you find value, and from value you end up creating those solutions I've mm. talked about. Um, so I would argue that it's, you can call it anything you want. And you can call it service design, because that's the buzzword. You can call it uh, user experience. You can mm. call it uh, design thinking. Is design brilliant. thinking is in. <laughs> what yeah. and you know you can say what's beyond design thinking, <laughs> and what's beyond uh, uh, user experience, and what's beyond. But there's only one answer, and it's people. People and behavior and their interaction between people and people. You feel that we are entering in a people-centric era, you know, if this was... I say we're there yet, okay. because I feel like I still have uh, quite a um, We're challenge. still struggling. Yeah, <laughs> but, but it's more important than ever before because of the turbulence we're seeing everywhere. And turbulence is symptomatic. The people-centric approach should never have not been there. Sure. And it's when we have tried to turn people into machines and things instead of remembering their behaviors that we have messed up this world. And it's very important to bring that back. And I'm not saying that it has to swing completely the other way, but there's got to be a balance between people and technology. And it's necessary for the future because of our dwindling resources worldwide. Okay. You, 
no, no, Although no, you're no, not no, on no. Twitter even. No, no, I know. I was on Twitter. I am now. Uh, about a month ago, I put myself back on. I was on Twitter, okay. and then um, I got some really unpleasant messages through it and connections, and I just, uh, I don't like social media. I turned it off for six to eight months, and I started it up again, but I don't think I'm going to use it. You're not going to be a big Twitter star. No, and there's a reason, because I think it's all very narcissistic. Narcissistic? Yeah. Okay. I think social media is extremely narcissistic, and it bothers me because it's the opposite of people-centric. It's me-centric. Okay. And I don't want to be me-centric. I want us to come to the point where we're working together and collaborating together. So I much prefer the, the one-to-many-many many sites than the... Uh, I used to be on everything. Okay. And it just... Uh, yeah, it's to me very uncomfortable. Um, and I don't want to self-promote. So I think that's the main reason I do it. You're, you, today you've, you've spoken a lot about, uh, you know, just skip the numbers. You yeah. know, it just felt like skip the numbers, go no. with the relationships. I think, I think the, the truth is that we need both, but they should be much more balanced. And the okay. reason is quantitative numbers can tell us the what if we're asking the right questions. So it's really about what questions are we a- actually asking and what does the data tell us. And are we making inferences we should not make from that, or are they uh, uh, realistic inferences? So that's the whole area of the quantitative. It's what, but quantitative will never tell you the how and why. Mm -hmm. So putting those together, you could uh, uh, get a, if you have a balance between the qualitative and the hows and whys, it can direct you in the quantitative to make sure that it's something happening more broadly. To validate the, the hypothesis. Yes. Or we can go to uh, quantitative da- data, and I've had situations where quantitative data has come out. What we found out was, here's the quantitative data, we went out to find the how and why, mm-hmm. and we actually found out that either the data was completely wrong, the quantitative data, or um, they that um, we, we actually found out the hows and whys which surprised the uh, customers. Uh, Some usability, uh, people get very um, defensive around Mm -hmm. qualitative studies. They feel that we are taking away their field. Uh, But to me, they they balance each other and they need to both be there. Uh, One more thing. Um, There's been a lot of talking and thinking about what's the best way to structure your business so it will produce good, sustainable, user-centric products. Mm-hmm. What's the best process? What's the best organization? Let's say, let's have a software development firm in, in mind here. Uh, what's the best organization uh, that will, you know, make good products? What would be? I know it's it's a one million dollar question, but of just try to attack one, it. It's a one million dollar <laughs> question, and I don't have the answers. What I can say is what I believe in. Okay. And again, it's people-centric. So okay. I believe leaders need to be focused on a value-based uh, uh, company that inspires and motivates people in the company to come with the best possible solutions to the challenges a, co- a company have. In my view, um, a company leaders should not be making decisions for the rest of the employees in secret rooms but they should be coming out with their challenges and asking, make it a game, ask their employees to solve it for them. Help us, we have this problem. If we don't solve that, we're going to have to cut 10%. Help us solve this problem. In groups, not individually, but help us solve this problem, and then we don't have to cut. So um, whatever the challenges are, they need to address those to the people and allow the people to be motivated. And then they own the outcome. They are more motivated and they're held accountable for what they do. And the most of us love that because we love goals. So we love the, the ability to try and solve things. So why not solve our internal problems as well? Okay. So I believe in value-based companies and believing, I honestly believe, if you don't believe in your employees, you shouldn't be a leader. Great. Okay. Thank you.